Hey everybody, it's Suze from Revelation Quilts. So I found this quilt inspiration on Pinterest. This is just a set of tiles that they were advertising and I thought that would make a super cool quilt. So I decided it was my mission to figure out how to make this block and I thought it would be simple. But then when I started playing with things, I realized I've got amazing options here out of one block. So I had to figure it out. I put it to a vote and I'll show you what I came up with. But then in the meantime, let me show you how to make this very cool and very versatile block. So what you'll need for this project are some 10 inch squares. And I am going to use these from my uh, scrap stash. I have a bunch of 10 inch squares. When I consolidated my scraps and I just cut them all into usable sizes and I ended up with a whole bin full of 10 inch squares. You can also use fat quarters, but I've already got these into 10 inch squares. This is going to be a scrappy project for me. So I'm just using what I have, using my stash. And out of these 10 inch squares, I'm going to pick out 20 dark and 20 medium to light. Uh, I don't want my medium to light to be white because I'm also going to be using a white jelly roll for this, for this block. And so you can use a jelly roll or you can use uh, two and a half inch strips. We're just going to call this our background fabric. So this is going to be a white jelly roll that I will be using. And so I've picked out 20 light and 20 dark. And so let me show you how to put this block together. So here I've got a dark 10 inch square and a light or medium 10 inch square. And I'm just gonna stack them right on top of each other. So they're nice and even. And out of these two 10 inch squares, I'm gonna cut four two and a half inch strips very easy. So I'm just going to start here at the edge, measure in two and a half inches and cut my four strips. There's one, and two, project has very little waste and there's three and just want to make sure that there's no extra here two and a half just a little bit on the bottom okay now two of these strips that I cut, I'm just going to stack right on top of each other. And I'm going to cut those in half. So I've got two, I'm just going to measure five inches from the end and cut that. So now I have a bunch of five inch strips. Um, half of them will be light and half of them will be the dark. So I'm just going to separate those out like so. And just so, just what I found when making this block is if you choose prints that are directional, that doesn't work very well for this. So that needs to be like either a solid or an all over print for this to work. So I'm just going to set these two aside for now. And I've got two more strips to work with of each the light and the dark and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put those right sides together so I'm just going to flip one of them over so they're right sides together and then I'm going to sew on these strips I'm going to sew down one side and up the other side on both of these strips so I will go do that and I will be right back so I've sewn down both sides of the strip. So now I've got a little, a little baby tube because they're all sewn together. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my strip tube ruler 
and I am going to cut half square triangles out of this. Now, if you don't have a strip tube ruler, I'm going to show you how to do this without one. So I'm gonna take my two and a half inch dotted line on my strip tube ruler, and I'm going to put that right on the, not on the edge, but I'm gonna put it right on the sewing line on the seam I just did on the sewing line. I'm gonna put that right along there and I'm just going to cut down each side of that point. And so what I'll end up with is a adorable little half square triangle. And I should be able to get four of those out of this strip. So I'm just gonna flip it over and line that two and a half inch dotted line right along the edge. I mean, right along where I've sewn and make another cut. And there's another one. Now the next cut, I'm going to have to scooch over a little bit because the two and a half inch, if I go right here, I'll be missing this little corner. So I'm just gonna scooch over a little bit and make a fresh cut down both sides. There we go. And I should be able to get one more out of here. And I don't need to make a fresh cut because it's already a nice straight edge. There we go. So I've got four little half score triangles out of that. And you should do the same thing to your other strip, but I'm gonna show you how to do it with just a regular square ruler. So what you do is you find your two and a half inch line on two sides of a corner. So one's here, one's here, and I'm just gonna put those arrows right where I've sewn. Two and a half inches, two and a half inches right along there. So I should be able to cut that just like that and down the other side. And I get the same adorable little half square triangle. So you can use a regular square ruler with this and then you're just gonna turn it over and make sure that that two and a half inch mark just, just touches that sewing line that you've made. And there's another. And again, with this one, you have to scooch it over a little bit. There we go. And one more. Two and a half inches. Okay, so I've got my, now I've got eight of these cute little half square triangles. So I'm going to take them over to the ironing board and I'm going to iron them to the dark side. So I, let me go do that and I will be right back. Okay. Aren't those just adorable? So I've got eight of these little half square triangles and but I see these, these dog ears on the edge. So I'm just going to take my scissors and cut those off one by one. It doesn't take long at all. Just line them up and snip off your dog ears. had my scissors sharpened yesterday. What a difference that made. It was only like $8 to have it sharpened. It was awesome. I had one spot on my scissors that would catch or the fabric, fabric would kind of roll under the blade and that is no good. And two more. Okay, get rid of all these little dog ears. 
So what I've got now is I've got my five inch strips of the dark, my five inch strips of the light, and I've got eight half square triangles. The last thing I need for this block is I'm going to take a jelly roll strip. It's still folded in half, just like it came off the jelly roll. I'm going to keep it that way. I'm going to cut off the selvage edge because I don't want that in my quilt. So I'm just going to take a little snip Get rid of those selvages. And out of this jelly roll strip, I'm gonna cut, make two cuts that are four and a half inches. And remember, this is this is doubled, so I'll be getting four all together. So there's four and a half inches. And I'm gonna make another one that's four and a half inches. And then I'm going to make two cuts that are two and a half inches. So they will be square, two and a half inches. And one more that's two and a half inches. Okay, so this is all I need to make my block. I've got four, four and a half inch strips. I have two, two, four, two and a half inch squares. I have eight half square triangles of my light and dark. I have four light strips that are about five by two and a half. And I have four dark strips that are about five by two and a half. So let's lay this out on my rotating cutting mat so I can show you the layout we're gonna use to sew these together. I like to lay things out on my rotating cutting mat, um, mostly because it's portable and I can just pick it up and I can take it over to my sewing machine when I need to. So here's how we are going to put these together. So I've got my eight half square triangles and I am going to arrange them. I'm gonna take four of them, one, two, three, four, and I am going to put them here. I'm doing this to face you, not to face me, so I'm trying not to get confused. And then I'm gonna take four, the other four and put them up in this corner. And then I'm going to take my strips and I'm going to put them here and my light strips I'm going to put here. Here's a white and a white. So this is almost a setup like a, like a log cabin, except you've got half square triangles instead of just plain old strips. So when I put this together, it's going to look something like this. See, I've got my pieces all nice and close together. And that is what our block is gonna look like. So let's take these over to the sewing machine and I'll show you how to sew them together. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our little half square triangle that's closest to you in the bottom right hand side and we're gonna just sew it together with this little white square. So I'm just gonna take the white square, flip it over, Make sure it's centered on there and I'm just gonna sew those two together like this. And when I put that back, I'm just going to press that away uh, from the little half score triangle. So we've got our first piece sewn together just like that. And this little four and a half inch by two and a half inch rectangle right now now it will fit almost perfectly right on there so we're just going to take this one that we've just sewn together and we're just going to flip it over and line up the top and the sides together and we're just going to sew down the side of that All right, that is done. And we're going to press that seam allowance again away from the little half square triangle. 
So that is that piece is sewn together. So the next step is to sew this, these two together. So we're just going to take this again and flip it over and line up the top and the side and we're going to sew right down this side. Okay, and then we're just going to sew up, press that seam allowance again away from the half square triangle. All right, so we're almost there already. So let's continue. So for the next step, we're gonna take these two little people and we're just gonna flip this over. I'm gonna line up the bottom and the side this time and I'm just gonna sew right up this line And for this seam, I'm going to finger press this away from the half square triangle. And for the very last step, we are going to sew the top to the bottom here. And so we're just going to flip this over this way. This seam right here is the only one that you'll have to match. So we have pressed this seam away from the half square triangle and we've also pressed this seam away from the half square triangle. So these two seams should be going in opposite directions. So in order to sew these together, we're just going to flip it over and nest those two seams together so that they are going opposite ways. That was going that way and the bottom one is going the other way. So we can nest those together, line them up along the top. And we're gonna sew those together. And then when we finger press that open, this is the adorable block that we end up with. It almost looks like a optical illusion a little bit. So our next step is to trim this, but before we do that, of course, before I show you all these amazing layouts, we have to trim up these blocks and uh, we're going to trim them to six inches and I'll show you how easy it is to trim up them up. So I have a six and a half inch square ruler here and I'm going to use my 45 degree line to go right down where this seam is that separates the light from the dark. And then I look at my two inch line on the top and on the side, and that makes a little square right here. So I'm just gonna put that right around my half square triangle. So everything is lined up there very nicely. And then I'm just going to trim the side and the top. Oops, I went crooked. There we go. Okay. Missed the little seam there. Okay. Then I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing. So my diagonal line is going right up that, and I've got my six inches, which is what we're trimming it to. And if you notice my four inch line now at the bottom, is making that little square around that half square triangle. And I am just going to trim the rest so that I have a nice six inch block there. So that is what the block will look like. So let me get these other three trimmed and then we'll go to our design board. This is everything up on the wall just like I made it. So as I made four of them, I would just put them down, add them to the wall. So this is just everything I made stuck up on the wall in the order that I made them. So I am going to play with the layouts a little bit and show you the different ways that we're going to do it. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the remainder of my jelly roll 
and put it up here as sashing because that is going to make it look like the original picture of the tiles that I saw on Pinterest. So let me do that and we're going to see what that looks like. So in this layout, all I've done is I have added strips, the white jelly roll strips in between. And so this is the close representation of the tiles that the look that I'm going after. And I think it, it looks pretty cool. And I also mixed up the colors and just put them up randomly. So this is the layout that I had in my head when I first started putting this together when I was looking at that Pinterest picture. But then I started really playing around and I noticed other things that would look pretty cool. So let's look at those other layouts. I still kind of think I'm going to go with this, but I want to look at the other layouts too. So let's see what happens. You guys, come on. Like I just put these together like I made boxes out of the white. Look how cute that is. Like I seriously really like this. It's got like these, it ends up making these, these X's and these bigger squares and I love this. I almost like this better than my original. Oh, this is going to be hard to decide which one I want to do, but that is super cute and it looks very cool. I didn't think I'd like it, but I love it. There's one more at least that I want to show you. So let me show you the next one. Oh, I really like this. You guys. So this one, this looks amazing. Like I, I thought this is going to look stupid, but seriously, all I did was turn each block the other way. Like I just turned, like every other one is turned the same way. And so this total pattern just looks very cool. Gosh. It's very, there's so many ways to make this block that I hadn't planned on when I started making it. So this is kind of freaking me out a little bit, but I have to sit and mull this over. Like, do I want to go with my original design or do I want to go with one of these new things? See, this is the part about being creative. That's the best part. And that's kind of the worst part too, because you're like, oh, what would happen if I did this? Oh, I really almost like that better. So I don't know. Now I have to mull over this for a few days and figure out which layout I like. Let me know in the comments which layout you liked best. And uh, we'll find out which one I ended up with. So I will let you know. Ta-da! This is the one I chose. I actually put a poll out on my webpage and among my Facebook friends and this is the one that was overwhelmingly voted for. So this is the one I chose. I chose to put a use the rest of my jelly roll and put a border around the edge and then I added an additional four inch border around the edge. The final quilt ends up to be 55 by 66 so a perfect lap size quilt and I really love it. I am calling this one Potama which is a Maori word for um, step pattern so uh, to honor my Maori friends. So that is today's tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it. I know that I did. And if you did like it, please like, share, and subscribe. I just love your support and I'm so grateful for it. So stay creative and have a great day.